Hello cookbook friends, this is Carrie with Cookbook Divas. Today I'd like to look through Under the Shade of Olive Trees with you, recipes from Jerusalem to Marrakesh and beyond. It's by Nadia Zerali and Marin Toll, and I love Mediterranean and Middle Eastern foods, so I'm very excited to look through this cookbook that came out a while back. Can't remember, and it says 2014. Okay, and it jumps right into the preface and the contents and there's a small font time to get out my granny glasses Woo! okay let's check it out um olives and olive oil bulgur and frica preserved lemons paprika paste harissa and aleppo pepper i'm going to learn a lot from this and i have all of those ingredients in my home and yet do i cook with them quite yet often no an entire chapter on tahini, spices, chickpeas and lentils, I eat a lot of those, uh, orange blossom and rose water, I don't care for rose water but I love orange blossom, grape leaves, pickled vegetables and capers, yum, couscous, yogurt, dairy and cheese, pomegranates and pomegranate molasses, sumac, uh, dips and spice mixes, figs, dates and apricots, pasta, Filo and yolka dough. I've never heard of yolka dough. Nuts, rice. This says, ah, smen and argan oil. Never seen that word, smen. Chapter on bread and then a chapter on friends. I love that they, in, that they sorted the chapters by ingredients. That's amazing. At the end of the book, there's how to enjoy an effortless festive Arabic meal at home and music to accompany a wonderful Arabian dinner party. Okay. Starting off, this cookbook doesn't mess around. They get right into it. Olives and olive oil, the basis for all the meals, right? Every dish deserves its own olive oil. Hummus and labneh, like a fruity green olive oil, for example. A Greek or Italian one from Puglia. Rustic Middle Eastern dishes prefer a flavorful Nabali or Rumi olive oil. And for some specific Moroccan peasant dishes, we choose a potent rustic olive oil from Uzan, a town in northern Morocco. Hmm. First recipe of the book. Chicory from Puglia. I see pasta. I see dried chickpeas. Oh, I think I see, No, maybe not pasta. Anchovy fillets. Pepperoncino or Aleppo pepper. And a head of chicory. I don't normally cook with chicory. Next up, oven dried olives. Yum. I love that so far every recipe has its own photo. This is Herrera, which I've seen on a menu at a restaurant here in Seattle. I didn't order it because I didn't know what it was and I didn't want to bother the waiter when I saw something else on the menu that I liked. The ingredients are tomatoes, tomato paste, onions, garlic, of course, ginger, celery leaves, flat leaf parsley, cilantro, ras el hanout, cinnamon, cumin, fenugreek, ginger, olive oil, chickpeas, butternut squash, brown lentils, flour, 12 specifically 12 quail eggs and cumin seeds. This serves six to eight people. Wow, let's look at that again. Sounds good. And it's vegetarian. According to oral tradition, it used to be possible to walk from Libya to Morocco under the shade of olive trees and safely. That's sad. Okay, olive oil cake. Green cauliflower couscous. I can't show you the whole book, so I'm going to skip ahead. Bulgur and frica. Here's a wheat salad. And a potato kibbeh. This would probably be the first thing I make out of this book. Love it. Ooh, that looks good. Bulgur salad. Notice that so far everything's vegetarian. Hearty frica soup. Bulgur salad. Now we're in preserved lemons. I have a jar of them. Do not taste the lemon on its own unless you want to go grilled potatoes. Mograbia, mograbi, don't know how to say it, looks delicious. And it's really hard to photograph beige gooey food. So they did a good job at making that look appetizing. Good job. Wintry bulgur salad. There's a lot of salads in this book. Fava bean salad, a lot of comfort food there. Now we're in the paprika paste. And if this isn't going to be a 20 minute review, I better hurry up. Stir fry Savoy cabbage. I don't normally like cabbage, but that looks good. Aha! 
Fish soup, not completely vegetarian cookbook. Now we're getting into the good stuff. Samak Hera? Don't know what that is. Is it Samak? Uh, it's harissa, Aleppo pepper, lemon, olive oil, a tub of Gernard. No idea what that is. Tahini, sumac, and garlic. Okay. Hmm. In the Middle East, popular wisdom has it that a wife should prepare spicy food because for her husband because bland food bespeaks love without passion. <gasps> I better add some spice to my boyfriend's dinner tonight. Harissa stew with merguez and sweet potato. I need to look up what merguez is. Potato kofta. Now, I don't need someone to tell me what merguez is in the comments on YouTube, but we're getting a lot of mansplainers and cookbook explainers. I will look it up. I promise I'll, I'll educate myself. Tahini. There's just so many different foods around the world. Isn't that part of the fun? Tahini halva ice cream. Sesame is one of the oldest cultivated plants on earth. Hmm. Salad of roasted cauliflower. So far, this seems like an incredibly healthy cookbook. Tahini and pekmez. Bread. Spices chapter. Let me see if I can just find one. Okay, seasoned salt. Megli with spices. What is that? Let's find out. Ingredients are blanched almonds, shelled pistachio nuts, caraway seed, anise seed, sugar, cinnamon, rice flour, lemon, and orange. Looks like a nice little dessert. Cinnamon star anise quinces, another healthy dessert. Cumin fennel fries, yum! I don't care for fennel though, too licorice -y. Chickpeas and lentils. I eat a lot of chickpeas and a lot of lentils because I'm a lifetime vegetarian. Here's Iraqi madfuna. That looks good. Here's feta with chickpeas. And Greek yogurt, garlic, pine nuts, onion, pickled turnips, flatbreads. Wow. Lebanese hummus with dukkah. Looks good. What else do we have? Whoa, so much. Okay, orange blossom and rose water. I have a feeling this will be the dessert chapter. Watermelon granita. That would be nice in summer, but right now it's almost Christmas. Tomato chutney. Do you make your own chutneys? I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Cucumber water. Mm -hmm. Rose meringue, if you like the flavor of rose water. I don't. White cabbage carrot salad. Yum. Grape leaves, pickled vegetables, and capers. I've never stuffed my own grape leaves, and I'd like to learn how. Cucumbers and sweet peppers, pickled turnips. Whoa, why are we suddenly into lamb chops? I have no idea why that ended up in a chapter with... I guess you put, it must be <laughs> the capers. Yep, it's the capers. Okay. Couscous, very important staple of the diet. Corn couscous. Okay, I've never had corn couscous. That sounds amazing. Couscous with hake? Hake? Don't know what that is. Zucchini couscous. Belbula couscous. Is a belbula a little berry? Oh, it's a type of couscous. Okay, yeah. Yogurt, dairy and cheese, ooh, delicious. Grilled vegetables. Arabia's labni, labni. And we're already out of that, oh, fried eggs. Look how delicious that looks. Ah, oh, that looks amazing. That's what I want for breakfast tomorrow. Pomegranates and pomegranate molasses. I have both of those in my home right now. Stuffed dates. Roasted beets with pomegranate molasses, I'm assuming. Yum, yum, yep. Anise yogurt, beautiful pictures. Focaccia, oh, I didn't expect to see that, nice. Sumac, I do not know how to use sumac, so I'm grateful for this cookbook. Grape leaf bundles, okay, I could try that. Sumac chicken, I know my boyfriend has ordered that at a restaurant before. And kibbe, and we're in another chapter now. Which one? Oh, no, herb salad. They fooled me. Something called sukuk semolina pizzas. Cute, little bite-sized morsels. Now we're in dips and spice mixes. We don't need to look at pictures of that. We know what dips look like. I'll scoot ahead. Here's a, now we're in the dates, figs and apricots chapter. Here's bastilla or bastilla. It is with saffron chicken, almonds, dates, and orange zest sugar. Oh, here's a beautiful fig wreath. 
gorgeous, with anise seed and tahini dip, chicken with preserved lemon, lamb tagine. Do you own a tagine? I'd be curious to hear about it. And pasta. Yum! Pasta and couscous in the same book. Yay! Popper daily with kofta and pesto trapanese. Here's Turkish pasta with sukuk, chickpeas, and dill. Yum. And a riso salad. Lots of salads. This is fideos. In Mexico, it would be fideos with grilled squid and migas. This is getting a little international. Nice. Short Turkish pasta with pulled lemon garlic chicken. Not the most appetizing photo, but I bet it's good. Here's the filo and yufka dough. Oh, yufka. Good thing I have my glasses on. In Turkish, Balkan, and Middle Eastern cuisines, not to mention Greek, a life without filo dough is unimaginable. Filo dough is used in both savory and sweet dishes, like baklava, for instance. Yufka dough is used only for savory recipes. The dough is unleavened and is made from just flour and water. Ooh, okay. And they make mahancha with dried Mediterranean fruits, fruits and cinnamon sugar. Filo dough pastries with mahalabia and medlars. Don't know what that is. A type of fruit I guess I've never heard. It looks like a persimmon, but no. Boric with nomad cheese and oregano. Yum. Savory. Fish bastilla with sautéed saffron fennel and fennel salad. A little pastry there. Sesame and poppy seed bundt cake. Okay, I'm going to skip ahead because I can't show you the whole book. Ah, oh, hazelnut honey cookies. Lots of desserts, sweet salty nuts. Rice. Yum, we get all the good stuff in this book. Maklu, makluba with eggplant and fresh dill yogurt. Another good job on the photographer. You made this look appetizing. It's hard to photograph brown stuff on a brown and beige stuff on a plate. Kushari, Gala's golden rice. I love making golden rice. Herbed rice salad, root vegetable tagine. That would be awesome in autumn. Light semolina soup. I'm not sure what that would taste like. I guess I have to find out. Something called amlu. Looks like a dessert. It is from almonds and hazelnuts with anise. Mm -hmm. And now we're in... Are we in a new chapter? Don't know. Chabakia. Toasted sesame seeds, flour, egg yolk, sunflower oil, butter, vinegar, and these seed. Okay. So, oh, their friends contributed some recipes. Shahar's Yemenite Chicken Soup. Wow. I love this cookbook. Glad I own it. I hope you enjoyed our cookbook look through and review under the shade of olive trees. I definitely recommend it. It's by Nadia Zirali and Marin Toll. It is amazing. You can see more of our cookbook look-throughs and reviews and previews at the cookbookdivas.com blog. We talk about cookbooks on our podcast, creatively named Cookbook Divas. We're on Facebook and Instagram, and of course the videos are on YouTube. We'd love to hear from you. Please drop us a note and a comment, and rate and review us on our podcast if possible. And thanks so much for watching. <laughs>